Number nine then. Two parts, six marks. First part, find the coordinates of the stationary points. There you go. On the graph with this equation. Notice it's got y equals f of x and then f of x equals. But since it's talking about stationary points for part A, I'm just going to refer to them as y equals. So you've got this. You've got y equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 24x. So differentiating that would give you, multiply by the power, take one of the power, 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. Let's talk about stationary points. So stationary points means that dy by dx should equal 0. You'll have to make that statement which consequently means that 3x squared plus 6x minus 24 should equal 0. Now you have to solve that. Now you could just drop, you can just divide that straight out of it. If you're only interested in solving the equation, keep it in if you wish to maintain the value of this, if you wish to evaluate this form of it, factorised form rather than this form. So that would just be x squared plus 2x minus 8. So that would be factorise it now x times x, multiply to give 8 with a difference of 2, that's 2 and 4. The larger one has to be positive, so we've got that. So finally you've got the stationary points are going to be at x equals 2 and x equals negative 4. Now it did just say find the x coordinates, so I'm not going to bother finding the y coordinates. And in part A I'm not going to use the nature table because it's part B that says Hence, determine the range of values of x for which the function is strictly increasing. Now you'd make up your nature table just to see when it's heading up and when it's heading down. Although you know anyway, you've got a positive cubic graph. It's going to look like this. It's increasing here and then it's increasing again there. But I'll have to put it down. Negative 4, 2. What happens before then? What happens between? What happens after? Those are the x's. I want to know what happens to dy by dx. So we'll put down a nature table. I know that at negative 4, the derivative is 0. And I know that at 2, the derivative is 0. So I need the value of the derivative in between them all. Not the value, just whether it's positive or negative. So you can either use this to evaluate it or this to evaluate it. Now you can actually use the signs of the factors but since hardly MD seems to do that, I'll do that one another time, you probably just pick numbers. Like I'll pick a 0, I'll pick a number after 2, anything would do a 5, a number before it, negative 5. And then obviously when it's 0, it's negative 24, so it's negative. When it's 5, putting it through that could be a bit of a pest. It's actually easier to use this. When x is 5, that'll be 3, which is positive. That'll be 9, which is positive, so the whole product will be positive. And when it's negative 5, you could put it through there if you liked. Better off using this expression. If x is negative 5, that part's negative. If it's negative 5, that part's negative, because negative 5 and 4 is negative 1. A negative times a negative is positive, and that's still positive, so it's positive. So it ends up looking like this, which you knew all along. So, you know you've got a maximum turning point at x equals negative 4. And you've got a minimum turning point at x equals 2, which I'll just state in case that's included in the marks. But the main thing is the two parts where they're increasing is this. So that means it's increasing, or f of x is increasing for x is less than negative 4. Then comes the thorny little business of what's the proper thing to put here. So I'll put this bit in next. X is greater than 2. Strictly speaking, that should be an or. Because that statement on its own wouldn't make sense with an and. You can't be greater than 2 and less than negative 4. Well, you can see how you can understand the and just loosely as, well, that bit would do. And that would be do. But strictly speaking, it should be or. But it might not even appear in the marking scheme that bit. It's just these two they're looking for.